Hello friends, welcome to Zeta Axis. Today we will discuss about extratropical cyclones. We have already seen what are tropical cyclones. Tropical cyclones occur in the tropics area and they are something like this in their structure. This is the path of tropical cyclones. We can see that how the tropical cyclones move. We can see there are tropical cyclones are located in these regions. If you plot on this world map, we can see that this is the area that is somewhere around 5 degree north and south till 30 degree north and south we can find most of the tropical cyclones in the tropical region. But today we will discuss about extratropical cyclones which occur in extratropical region that is regions outside of tropics. Therefore, these are different than the tropical cyclones we know. Now when we see the flow of winds in the world, we know that in our temperate zone, westerly winds flows in this region and polar winds flows from the eastern direction in this region. And we see that there is a front or there is a intersection point of these boundaries. Basically, here we see a feral cell and in this region we see a polar cell which intersect over here. So we can easily say that because this westerlies come from the tropics or near the tropics, we see a warm air here. And because this air comes from the polar regions, we see a very cool air over here. And this is the point of intersection of these two air masses. Over these air masses, we see that jet streams are there. This is the polar jet stream which is formed at the intersection of these two air masses. Now this jet stream does not flow in a straight line. It forms some wave-like structures. At certain locations, they are extended more northward, while other locations they are stretched more southwards. And we see that overall movement of airs in the temperate region around 60 degrees, something like this, where we see a north northernward extension of westernies, while at some locations there is a southward extension of polar winds. And this is the interaction zone. Around, uh, along the jet streams. If we take one such intersection, we can see that at here we have warm air mass, here we have cold air mass, and in the middle we have jet streams. Now because of the jet streams, we see formation of some disturbance over here. We see that upper air divergence is created. So remember, in the tropical cyclones, we see that the disturbance is in the lower atmosphere, that is at the sea surface level. But in the extratropical cyclones, it starts with a disturbance or a divergence of air in the upper atmosphere because of the, or mostly because of the jet streams. Now, because of this upper air divergence, air starts to move outwards from this region, as you can see over here. Now, when the air in this region is depleted, we see that this divergence, it starts to extend towards the ground. We can see the extension that is moving towards the ground. We see the air is moving here and then it moves outward direction. And because of this, a low pressure is created over here. And we can see that because of a low pressure existing in this region, we see that air from all directions. We can see that air from all directions are trying to move towards here. We see a pressure gradient force which tries to move the air towards this direction because there is a low pressure in the middle. Now here we see a warm wind or warm air mass or a small segment of warm air mass. The pressure is the pressure gradient due to which this warm air is trying to move towards the low pressure region. At this location there is no Coriolis force on this. Now we are considering this extratropical cyclone in the northern hemisphere. Therefore, when this air mass will start to move, we will see a Coriolis force from this direction. Try to move it in the right hand side. Now as this warm air starts to move towards this low pressure area, we see that the Coriolis force is increasing over the time. And this Coriolis force is trying to deflect this warm air. And we see that this warm air is deflected and it comes to this intersection region. Similarly, a lot of other air masses are deflected due to the Coriolis force when they are trying to reach this low pressure region. But because of Coriolis force, they will deflect and they will apply a pressure on this boundary. They will try to move this boundary 
backwards, thus forming a warm front over here. Similarly, in the colder regions, we see a cold air mass. This cold air in the cold air mass is trying to move towards the low pressure. And this is the pressure gradient which is acting on this cold air. Now again, when it starts to move, we will see formation of Coriolis force. And because of this Coriolis force, again, this cold air is not able to directly reach here, but is deflected. It is given a turn. And it will again come to this boundary of cold air and warm air. Similarly, other cold airs in this cold air mass is also deflected. And we see that these wind currents, they are deflected and they come to this boundary of cold and warm air and they try to move this boundary in this direction, thus forming a cold front. So, we can see that in an extratropical cyclone, we have a warm front on this side and a cold front on this side and the warm air is in the middle. Now, just as it happens in a warm front, the warm air tries to move the cold air and as we have already seen in our warm front discussion that this warm air which is trying to move this cold air is lighter therefore it is not able to directly move this cold air but it forms a slope we can see here this is the warm front and we see a slope like structure where the warm air will slowly rise up through this slope and we see formation of sequence of clouds similar thing happens at this warm front where we will see that the warm air which is coming from the air mass it will start to rise up this slope and it will also form clouds during this formation so at this margin we have a gentle slope created the cold air is moving slowly away and clouds are formed in this process and we see light rains in this region because of these clouds which are formed these clouds do not give very heavy rainfall like the cumulonimbus clouds but still there is light rainfall in this region at this juncture. Now if we move to cold air front, then we will see that the cold air mass which comes here and applies pressure, the cold front tries to replace the warm air over here. And therefore, just like we have discussed in cold front, the cold air will rapidly uplift the warm air. We will see formation of cumulonimbus clouds. So here we can see that this cold air is trying to rapidly uplift the warm air and simultaneously we see formation of cumulonimbus clouds. So here, there is a very large amount of rainfall in this region. Slowly, when this front cold front moves forward, it approaches the warm front. And after some time, we will see that this warm air mass, which is trapped in between these two cold air masses is uplifted. That is, we see formation of occluded front. And this is when our extratropical cyclone stops. So I hope you understood the whole process of extratropical cyclone which includes two fronts, warm front and cold front. At the warm front we see a giant slope is formed and at the cold front we see that air is rapidly uplifted and cumulonimbus clouds are formed. Slowly these two fronts meet and they form an occluded front over here. Now, we have seen these fronts one by one, but in practice, both of these fronts move simultaneously, as you can see here. So, this is the actual mechanism by which an extratropical cyclone occurs. In this video, you can see an actual extratropical cyclone, which are comma-shaped in their structure. You can see this is the extratropical cyclone, which is developing. We see a comma-shaped cloud over here and the fronts are moving in this direction. If we plot the fronts, we will see that this is the cold front. This is the warm front and this is the occluded front. Here, we get a separate cold dry air which moves in, but that is out of scope of our study, so we will not look into it. I hope this video helped you understand how extratropical cyclones occur. If you have any doubts, please ask in comments and I will try to reply to them as much as possible. Thanks for watching the video and if you liked our video, please like, subscribe and share. And again, we will be making geography videos for all the topics related to UPSC. So please subscribe and press the bell icon. Thank you.